So hopefully you guys got some really good information out of the slides to kind of help you understand why chlorine is in our water, how it gets there, why we need to get it out, and then some of the best ways to filter it out. So at the bottom of this um, video, there's going to be a link to this week's blog post. In that post, I have shared links for you um, that include the water filters that I mentioned in the slides and then any studies that I reference about chlorine in water. So there were a lot of them. We learned that um, it's a carcinogen. We learned that it really affects um, your skin, your organs, it affects kids. So that is all linked in this week's blog post if you have any questions. Um, if you have any questions based on that, please feel free to email me. My email address is found on my website or you can contact me on one of my social media channels. Otherwise, I will be back next week with another healthy house tip for you guys to create the healthiest home environment that you can. So let's talk about chlorine in drinking water. Um, We'll find out what this chemical is doing to your health, how you can remove it, um, and why it's there in the first place. So let's get started. Um, so how do we get chlorine in drinking water? Um, first, I think it's important to realize and understand how we do this. Um, it's going to give you a lot of insight into why we need to remove it. Um, so chlorine is added excuse me, to drinking water in order to disinfect it. Um, it kills bacteria and harmful microorganisms in the water. It is necessary because most water comes from underground aquifers um, and groundwater streams that can be contaminated with bacteria at some point. Um, now the CDC claims that chlorine in water is completely safe to drink and that it's dispersed throughout the water. And so many, us, many of us consume like what they call safe levels of the chemical. Um, I tend to disagree. I kind of feel like... Any trace amount is probably not that healthy for our bodies. Um, originally, chlorine in drinking water was actually it was first used in like 1908 to reduce the spread of typhoid fever. Um, today, chlorine is used in like 98% of all United States water utilities. Um, the chlorine-based com compounds that they use basically disinfect the water, kill microorganisms and bacteria before it's sent to your home. Um, but not all microorganisms are harmful to your health. Um, the way they do this is through a chlorinating process. It's done in multiple steps. Um, it addresses different bacteria and waterborne disease prevention at each of the different treatment steps. Um, chlorine continues to be used as a disinfectant due to the cost effectiveness um, of the method, but I think it's also important to note that there are safer and healthier alternatives out there to disinfection that just aren't used due to cost and it's kind of just how we've always done it. So let's talk about the health risks of chlorine in tap water. Um, I've talked about other contaminants um, there are three ways that we come into contact with chlorine, just like every other contaminant. The first is ingestion, um, and that's what we're going to talk about first. This is kind of the most obvious way that we come in contact with this contaminant as we consume and drink water from our homes on a regular basis, as well as cook with it. Uh, consum consumption of chlorine and drinking water may look different depending on who is consuming it. So adults... Uh, can handle a larger amount of chlorine in drinking water in comparison to like an infant maybe who's drinking formula made with chlorinated water. I think it's also really important to keep in mind, as always, if you have kids or babies, their risk of these health effects will be much greater than the risk of a healthy adult. So consuming drinking water with chlorine has been shown through multiple studies to increase the risk of bladder cancer. Um, it's also been linked to breast cancer and bowel cancer. And then other non-cancerous effects of chlorine in water would be like irritation to the liver and the intestinal tissue. Another side effect that they're seeing from chlorine is weakened teeth and increased tooth decay. The chlorine kind of appears to corrode the teeth due to the hydrochloric acid that is formed. And then it can also cause inflammation of the lining of the mouth. Um, 
there's a series of studies that I found that were performed between 2008 and 2016. And what they did is they linked chlorine water to an increased risk of birth defects when consumed by pregnant mothers. This included um, heart problems, cleft palate, brain abnormalities, and even an increase in miscarriages and stillborn babies. Um, if you would like any of these studies, just head over to the blog post that I have linked and I have all of the studies um, linked for you. So now we're going to talk about another way that you come in contact with chlorine in your drinking water. Um, it's through inhalation and absorption. So this is going to be when you shower mostly. Um, so most common is when we shower or bathe in unfiltered water at home. Um, a lot of times our showers are not filtered. Usually we have a filtered drinking water system, but not necessarily for our showers. And the trouble with this is, believe it or not, the inhalation of chlorine in drinking water during like a hot shower is actually just as detrimental to your health as consuming it. So the chlorine byproducts that end up in the water vapor while showering are 100 times more frequent than drinking the same exact water. So your body actually absorbs the volatile organic compounds, so VOCs, during bathing, which increases the health risk in several areas. Um, the first area that chlorine in drinking water can be exponentially effective um, on our health is the respiratory system. So obvious issues would be inflammation and irritation to the nose and throat and membranes, but it also affects the lungs and can trigger, trigger um, asthma as it kind of allows the passage of allergens. Um, Skin and hair are also areas of the body that can be really damaged by the effects of chlorine in drinking water. Chlorine strips the skin of normal oils and it can cause rashes and drying of both hair and skin. Um, but then chlorine can also advance the age of free radicals inside the body on the skin. This can increase the risk of melanoma, skin cancer. Um, it also just advances the whole aging process. So let's talk about how do we remove chlorine from water. There's a couple different ways. Um, so once we kind of understand these health effects and understand why it's important to get rid of them, the next step is figuring out how to get rid of them. Um, I think the most important thing to remember about chlorine in drinking water is that not only are health effects present from drinking the water, but like we just talked about, they're also present in um, inhalation and absorption. So the first option is a carbon filter. Um, this is an activated filter. You can either do like a pitcher form if you just want to do drinking water, or I recommend like a whole house form. Um, it can be used to filter out small amounts of chlorine. It So this is best for like if you have water that's treated from a city that, you know, just has the trace amounts in it. Um, it, can, it reduces the contaminant and then it neutralizes it. Um, and then in order to remove it, you would have to keep filtering it for a long time, which is why I think the whole house filter is really best. The second type of filter would be like an RO water filter system. It's extremely common um, and it's really effective when it comes to removing not only chlorine, but other contaminants from your drinking water as well. A multi-stage RO system or reverse osmosis system um, is best. This is the most common type of system um, and usually it's just present at one faucet uh, for drinking water. Another thing that you could try would be like chemical neutralization. Um, this is another method that kind of serves to neutralize the chlorine in water. Um, there are tablets you can add. A lot of times the shower head filters that you find, that's the type of filter it is. So that's a good option for just a point of use at your shower. And then the last one is um, ultraviolet light. So UV technology is usually paired with like another kind of filter when you're trying to remove chlorine in drinking water. And most commonly it's used before a reverse osmosis system. Um, the UV lights safely destroy the chlorine, but it also sanitizes the water from bacteria, which is really helpful. And then on the blog this week, I am sharing with you my top three filter, four filters for the house. Um, Berkey countertop filters. I have the link in my blog post if you'd like it. It's a countertop filter that filters out like 99% of water contaminants. It's a great option if you don't have um, 
a means to get something plumbed in. There's um, a shower filter that I'm sharing. This is great for if you want to just filter chlorine out while you're showering because we know that that's such a um, pain point of this toxin. And then I'm also sharing with you um, one of my favorite RO systems and one of my favorite carbon block filter systems for your whole house. So you can look at those and compare and contrast them. So hopefully you guys got some really good information out of the slides to kind of help you understand why chlorine is in our water, how it gets there, why we need to get it out, and then some of the best ways to filter it out. So at the bottom of this um, video, there's going to be a link to this week's blog post. In that post, I have shared links for you um, that include the water filters that I mentioned in the slides and then any studies that I reference about chlorine and water. So there were a lot of them. We learned that um, it's a carcinogen. We learned that it really affects um, your skin, your organs, it affects kids. So that is all linked in this week's blog post if you have any questions. Um, if you have any questions based on that, please feel free to email me. My email address is found on my website or you can contact me on one of my social media channels. Otherwise, I will be back next week with another healthy house tip for you guys to create the healthiest home environment that you can.